Many people talk about happiness. Now let's uh, distinguish the difference between conditional happiness and the happiness derived from seclusion, in the words of the Buddha. The happiness derived from awakening, realizing. There are two differences, big differences. So the worldly happiness, the mundane happiness, is usually uh, you get a, you choose a good partner and you have a good relationship and you have a good family and you look after your family and the family looks after you or you be successful, you have a lot of money, you have a successful profession or a job, whatever it may be, or you give back to community and uh, you do all the wholesome deeds to have these kinds of happiness, right? Now, not that there's anything wrong, so don't mistake, right? Like, as always, you know, a precursor or a, or a clause to this discussion is that this is not a pointing at and uh, disparaging people or uh, things or uh, ways of thinking, but it's more about thinking to get better. It's more about getting to a better place uh, because the practice is all about cultivation and development for what? Well, we're trying to reach our better selves. We're trying to develop ourselves, right? In what? Well, in the world, that that's one development. In the teachings of the Buddha, that's another, right? We're talking about freedom, real freedom, freedom from birth, freedom from death. Now think about that, right? So that's a, a deep discussion. But anyway, yeah, basically the the formula in a lot of discussions in this world is go to school, get good grades, or excel at whatever you do, have a lot of money, have a lot of wealth, have a good partner, and you'll be happy. The thing that we don't discuss is the conditional arrangement. And this is something we don't talk about often enough, is conditional happiness. So. Whenever you're in any relationship, it comes with conditions, whether you like it or not. And that, and that includes friendships, family, friends, mother, father, all these kind of things. Now, again, we're talking about, talking about truth, crystallizing what's actually happening, seeing things as they are. We're not talking about positive, negative. We're not talking about good or bad, we're not talking about morality or immorality in this case. We're just trying to see things as they are. Now, conditional happiness, <clears throat> as long as you comply with the rules of engagement, right? you get a certain level of happiness, but that's as long as you comply with the rules of engagement. For example, if you're in a relationship with whoever it may be, whether intimate relationship, whether a friendship, or whether a business, whether um, and if business is more uh, apparent because there's usually contracts, right? But then there's unwritten contracts, written contracts which are given by word. For example, when you get married, there's a there's a contract for better, for worse, for goodness and for sickness and health. These kind of things, right? But these are all conditional arrangements and can be broken at all times. So these conditional arrangements is what the what we talk about uh, as kind of like a, a mundane a mundane kind of happiness. They come with conditions. So in other way, in other words, you buy a nice car, but then you have to buy insurance. You got to maintain it. You got to park it. You got to make sure it has a good cover um, in the season so it it doesn't spoil. Things like this. So all these come <clears throat> even finances. Finances and wealth come with taxes, organization, management, and it comes with its own set of problems. However, it gives you more ease in terms of material comforts in life, and that's about it. Now, how about the notion of happiness without anything? Happiness derived from contentment, happiness derived from uh, happiness derived from contentment, happiness derived from seclusion. 
I lost my train there for a moment, but happiness from seclusion. Happiness in the sense that once the citta, once your mind understands not self, and we're talking deep here in terms of not even needing the body, not even needing to be reborn because the desire has been cut. Now this is a, I, I would say, super mundane happiness, a different happiness, a different kind of happiness that we don't talk about enough in our world, in our societies. We don't talk about this enough, nor do we uh, have the conversations discussing the limitations of happiness derived from the normal, from the normal, I guess, uh, uh, standards of society, relationships, family, business, work, etc., etc., etc. Because we don't talk about those things. We don't talk about those things. We always talk about the cake, but we never talk about making the cake, getting the ingredients, you know, the, the work that goes into making the cake. All we're ever concerned, is, concerned with is the taste of the cake, eating the cake. But we're never concerned about how the cake got there in the first place. Because if, you're concerned, if you think about that for a moment, you realize it takes a lot of work to get a cake there so you can taste it right now of course this is in terms of effort it's not great effort it's it's more like a you know, mundane effort but still it still requires time and and uh, thinking and work and preparation preparation and getting things together and etc 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 so imagine happiness without anything imagine being content with having very, very little. Or even in the end, when we when when it's time to for our demise, it's time to move on. Imagine not having to be reborn, not having the desire to want to take form ever again, because your chitta is fully awakened, your mind is fully awakened and released, released from dukkha, right? Released from ignorance, released from not knowing. So if the mind is imbued with knowing now, you're fully awake. Now this happiness is something we ought to talk about more and more, not less and less.